Hi folks, this is Jay. Hope you're okay today. It's good to be with you. Uh, I just want to share with you some thoughts on same-sex marriage and the rest. Uh, I'm just going to play you a little bit. I hope you can hear it. Um, I can't play because I can't get it on the right format to play. So I'm just going to play a little bit. It's called Same-Sex Marriage, Double Standards and Discrimination, Aussie Mandes, Ramesses II. Uh, I'll just show you a picture. It'll flash, but you can at least see his website, his channel, and go onto his channel, which is uh, there. Okay. Aussie Mandes, Ramesses II, Same-Sex Marriage Standards. Okay. So at least you can see his uh, thing, it's flashing there, but at least you can see um, his channel. So we'll just listen to what he has to say a little bit. Okay. Sex marriage. It's the claim, frequently made by opponents of same-sex marriage, that their stance, that people may marry only people of the opposite sex, can't possibly be discriminatory because such a policy or rule is not itself discriminatory. Everyone, so the argument goes, is subject to the same rules or the same policy when it comes to marriage. Namely, everyone is free to marry someone of the opposite sex. Everyone. Provided they're all adults or consenting, etc. And since everyone, gay or straight, is subject to the same rule, not to different rules or different rules applied to different classes of people, there can't possibly be any discrimination or injustice in such a policy. Um, as they see it, it's not comparable to a discriminatory policy that says white people can drink from this water fountain, but non-whites must drink from that water fountain over there. No one, they argue, is being singled out, picked out. No one's being discriminated against or even mentioned. Uh, hence, there's no double standard. The rule stating that people may marry only people of the opposite sex is just one equally applicable rule. There is only one standard, one policy, same standard applied to all, and hence no discrimination, and hence no injustice. But of course, that beggars a very important question. What should be the rule or policy? To appreciate the relevance of this question um, and is, is to see how it pertains to, to double standards and what makes for unjust social policies. Consider that this argument against same-sex marriage is actually, well, it's exactly the same type of argument that was sometimes invoked to prohibit interracial marriage in our not-too-distant history. Everyone's free to marry anyone they wish of the same race. That used to be the rule. How very equitable. Everyone's playing by the same rules, right? How could that not be fair? That was the argument. The problem, of course, is that it's not merely a question of everyone playing by the same rules, but wanting the relevant rule to be in place. What rule was that? Would, would that be? Well, consenting adults want to be free to marry whomever they please from the pool of consenting adults they are actually attracted to, and not have that pool be restricted based on race or ethnicity, social class, reproductive capability, or gender. People want to marry the people they love, love them back. They don't want the pool of potential marital partners to be composed solely of people they aren't attracted to. Now, the old racist rule that said, everyone may marry anyone within their own race was perfectly fair in the non-relevant sense. That is, it was a rule that could be applied equally to all, and was. That didn't make it a fair rule. There are people who find people of other races and ethnicities more attractive than others, for instance. In some cases, a, a person's romantic and sexual preferences may be such that they may have no interest in people outside of a certain ethnic or racial group. To give you an example, when I was in university, I once had a friend, a straight friend, um, who was interested in Asian women only. He didn't find all Asian women attractive, of course, but he found Asian women so much more attractive in general that non-Asian women were simply of no interest to him sexually or romantically. He only was interested in and pursued Asian women. 
A rule applied to everyone which said everyone must marry within his or her own race exclusively would have been highly unfair to him, especially given that such a rule isn't motivated by the protection of a vulnerable group, um, such as we have with children, for instance, who, incidentally, by virtue of their comparatively limited experience and emotional and psychological limitations, are highly vulnerable to manipulation and exploitation by adults who possess greater strength, greater power, more knowledge, and more life experience. And while we're on the subject of children, or people who have significant cognitive impairments for that matter, we have another very good principal reason for prohibiting such marriages with them. Marriages are institutionalized contractual arrangements, and contracts require that the agents involved be non-minors. The children, you see, lack the cognitive and emotional maturity and life experience to enter into such serious contracts, and consent is relevant because a contract is only a contract, is only binding upon the agents who enter into it if they do so free of any manipulation, coercion, deception, or fraud. But we don't have comparable good arguments based on the protection of individuals or certain classes of people who are getting married when we're arguing against same-sex marriage. So analogies with marrying children are just not on. Returning to my college buddy, though. The fact that there aren't a lot of people like my college buddy with his uncommon psychosexual preferences for Asian women, and that this fact about his psychosexual makeup isn't visible to everyone just by looking at him, and that it's not explicitly mentioned in a hypothetical rule prohibiting interracial marriage, doesn't mean that such a rule against interracial marriage would be fair or any less of an infringement upon his liberty. What would be the purpose of such a rule except to prohibit him from marrying a consenting adult he can actually be attracted to, and to restrict him to a pool of women, however large, he finds himself unable to find sexually or romantically interesting. This argument that there's no injustice if there's no double standard is exactly what was argued in the case of anti-miscegenation laws, which made interracial marriage impermissible. You must marry only within your race. That was the rule. That wasn't a double standard either, because there was only one standard applied to everyone. But it was stupid. Okay. Um, yeah, I put this challenge out to you. It was a, uh, It's a Sunday afternoon. It's a lovely day. And um, this challenge goes out to you, sir. Um, I've listened to your video twice. Um, Aren't you making a logical fallacy? Um, you're equating what happened about race relations and race marriage and saying because that was unjust at a certain period of history. Therefore, the same arguments that people are using today to prohibit same-sex marriage, they're the same kind of arguments that we use in the past. Therefore, Prohibiting same-sex marriage is wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong, but isn't that a logical fallacy? Um, same-sex marriage and advocating same-sex marriage is not the same on the same level as race relations. Um, what you're doing is using an emotional argument Everybody uh, who, should, who, who is decent and uh, fair-minded should recognize that um, racism is wrong. Um, and what you're doing is, because people generally know that it's wrong, you're using a race argument and applying it, race, to sexuality. And that's always been the gay rights philosophy. It's never been able to defend its position purely on its own terms. If you look at all the intellectuals that have spoken on gay rights over the last 30 years, they never defend gay rights independently from their own resources and own terms. They always attach it 
to race relations. Or, you know, ra race, each race has equal rights, therefore we deserve equal rights. So they're using the race issue, which is a powerful emotive issue in which the vast majority of people in America and the UK would say that discrimination against anybody, any color, any creed, any um, any any race is it, just wrong. And then taking that and applying it to sexuality, but the two are not the same. The two are not the same, and they're not the same for a variety of reasons. Number one is you don't get to choose your race. You don't get to choose how you were born. You do get to choose your sexuality. You do get to make a choice. If you don't get to make a choice, then if you do engage, if, if you say that you don't get to make a if if you argue, Ozzy, or if any gay rights activist argues that that it's not my choice, it's the way I'm born, then how can you enter into a legal contract of marriage? That's something of free choice. You either have a choice or you don't have a choice. So if you argue that you're born gay and that that's the way it is, and that's the same as race relations, then how do you enter into a marriage when it's not free will? You have a choice and at the end of the day it's not the same to use as the gay rights activists have done for the last 30 years gay, uh, the gay issue and associate it with the race issue is a logical fallacy and it, it's totally flawed intellectually the reason why the gay rights movement has got away with it and the reason why you're getting away with it is because it's not a base, it's not on the basis of logic it's not on the basis of evidence, it's not on the basis of politics, it's not on the basis of anything democratic, it's on the basis of existential dogma. That's what it's on the basis of. I'll prove to you, beyond a shadow of a doubt, Ozzy, that what you're saying is just existential dogma. It's existential dogma what the gay rights activists are advocating with same-sex marriage. And I'll prove it to you beyond a shadow of a doubt on a number of intellectual grounds. Number one, you've made this video and you come across as very intelligent, smart uh, and, and clever and all the rest of it. And many of these gay rights activists do get on in America and the UK, come across as very clever and smart and very reasonable. But you're asking us in America and the UK to accept gay marriage same-sex marriage, whatever. On what basis? Was there a national vote in America, Ozzy? Was there a national vote on same-sex marriage? No. Was there a national vote in the UK for same-sex marriage? No. It was brought in underhanded politically in America and it was brought in underhanded politically in the UK. Nobody had a right to vote on the issue. 